Good morning to our Anointed Ground Church family and our listening audience. We're so happy to have you with us during our worship experience for today. We do have some birthdays coming up for this week. Happy birthday to Sister Vanessa Hardy and Sister Joanne Day on Monday, February the 22nd. So happy birthday to the both of you. And we definitely want to continue to keep Sister Joanne Day lifted up in prayer for her speedy recovery. So we both want Vanessa and Sister Joanne to have a wonderful birthday. And on happy birthday on Wednesday, February the 24th, to Sister Valerie Gibbons. Happy birthday, Sister Valerie, and we usually call you Sister Val. So happy birthday to you and enjoy your birthday. Now we know that um, we do have our, our young people still giving their AB honor roll, and we do have one of our young persons that have um, made the AB honor roll for this grading period. And that goes out to Brother Quincy Ned. So we're so proud of you, Brother Quincy, and continue up the good work in your schooling. And I know Dad is so proud and Mom is so proud of you. So we love you and continue on. And we want all of our young people to send in your report cards and your AB honor rolls so we can definitely announce those. Now we know that this is Black History Month and you know that Anointed Ground Church usually has a big Black History celebration service on the fourth Sunday, but since the pandemic, we'll, we'll not be able to do that. But what we're going to do is to be able to have a Zoom fellowship during the Black History Month. So we invite each of you to go to the anointedgroundchurch.org website and go to the home page where you will see contact us just like you do each time when we have our Zoom. So make sure you go there and put in the information, your name and email, or your phone number that you'll be using or whatever device you will be using for the Zoom for next Sunday. And it will be at 10.30 a.m. because we wanna make sure we keep you in that right time frame of 10.30 for our morning worship services so when we come back together, you won't be off sync with it. But please go to the home page and go to the Contact Us tab and put all of the information in. And please remember to submit it at the end. If you don't submit it, it will not go to my son, uh, the email address, in order for him to send you the link that you will need to have to sign in. So please do that. We would love to see everybody's faces on the Zoom for next Sunday. So we won't be standing here uh, giving our, um, the messages online here, but we'll be able to see you also on the Zoom on next Sunday, Lord's willing. So we truly thank God for each of you and hope that everyone of Anointed Ground Church can be a part of the Zoom so all the members can see each other. So we truly thank God for that. Our scripture for this morning will be coming from Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 6, and it reads as follows. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, whom for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. And verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So we truly thank God for the word that has been shared today. And then Pastor Reeves comes forth this morning to give the message. Pastor Reeves. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you, sweetheart, for that wonderful reading of the scriptures that we will be sharing and, and allowing God to 
give us some revelations and some wisdom. We serve a good God. Can I hear you out there say amen? Yes, we do. It's wonderful that God is with us. He has brought us safely, family, this far, and he's keeping us. And so we are so grateful for everything that God is doing and how God is simply faithful, keeping us through this pandemic and watching over us. And I continue to pray that blessing and covering of divine protection upon you, your family, your children, your loved ones, anyone connected to you. He gives his angels charge over us to keep us. So we are grateful. So again, it's good, as Pastor, you know, often would say, uh, we are so grateful. It's such an honor and privilege to be called the pastor of this church. And it's not just because of the building or because of, of the edifice or anything like that. No, it's because of the people who are the, the true church. They make up, they comprise uh, the, the, the essence of the church or the people. And I want to say to each of you, I'm so grateful and thankful to each of you. It's been a long haul since we've gathered together, but there are so many of you that are so faithful, and you're, you're just faithful not only in your giving, but you're, you're faithful in your prayers and your, your due diligence. So we want to simply say thank you from the bottom of our heart. You know, what you do for Christ, only what you do for Christ is going to last. So we are so very much appreciative. Now, I want you to do something as we get ready to go into the Word. I want you to find what I'm holding in my hand here, a pencil. I want you to get some pencil and paper because I want to just take my time and, and, and allow you to share and take some notes. I see my wife has an ink pen over there already, but I want you to just share with us as God allows me to, to speak to you from my heart. Now, we're still dealing with the series about the abundant life, the abundant life. Jesus said in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, verse 10, he says, I've come that you might have life, and not just have it, but have it more abundantly until it overflows, until, it, until the full. So we're still talking to you, and we're still speaking on the subject of that abundant life. And the subject today I want to use are the essentials for an abundant life. The essentials for an abundant life. Those things that are essential, those things that are absolutely necessary, imperative, those things that are required for us to experience and, and live this abundant life. So keep that pencil and paper ready because as we go through, we want God just to, to walk us through this process and, and share and reveal to us everything we, he wants us to see and, and receive. Let us pray. Father, you are so good and we are so grateful, Lord, to be a part of the kingdom. Anointed Ground Church is a part of your kingdom. We are so appreciative to be a part of what you're doing, Lord, upon this planet. So we're so grateful. Now, Father, speak to your people. Uh, use me as your instrument, as your vessel, as your oracle. And Lord, I pray that you get all the glory and the praise and the honor. And we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. And everyone says amen. Hebrews 12.1 is the scripture I want to focus on today. The essentials of an abundant life. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside... Every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So as we still look for ways and explore, in essence, the possibility and, 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 and the attainability of being able to live an abundant life, even in the season we're in, we have to realize that this scripture tells us that we have to eliminate stuff from our lives. It, it refers to one aspect of things we have in our life as simply a weight. And the other aspect is a sin. So there are things in our lives that are not sinful, but they're just weighty. They're just unnecessary. We have to look at those things and eliminate them. We have to basically 
only go forth from here things that are essential, those things that are absolutely necessary. When you think about a ship, I'll use this as a very good analogy. When a ship is in danger of sinking, any ship, doesn't matter what it is, but whenever a ship is in danger of sinking, there are some things that has to be thrown overboard. Anything that is not absolutely essential, let me say that again. When a ship is in danger of sinking, anything that is not absolutely essential to the operation of that vessel and to the safety of its passengers is thrown overboard. And nobody, and particularly the captain, doesn't like to throw overboard any cargo because cargo costs something. But in the time of danger, in the time of a threatening of, 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 of the ship to, to sink, things that are not absolutely important and essential are thrown overboard. Now, they may have some sentimental value, things like pictures of loved ones, china sets or dishes and so forth, jewelry. But at this moment, the china set, the pictures of your loved ones, the jewelry, none of that is essential. And so a lot of things that we value that have sentimental value has to be thrown, someone say, overboard. Simply because of what reason, Pastor? Because the ship is in danger of sinking and the passengers' lives are at risk. Now, we have to realize that when we think about the season that we're in, we think about what we're going through as a nation, we think about what we're going through as a church, we have to stop for a moment. I think this season is forcing us to reassess what we value, to reassess what's really important, to reassess what, what, what we really need to, to place emphasis on. Yes, I think this season is allowing us to really identify those things that are essential to us. Can you say amen? Yeah, so, so, so a lot of things, it's the same when you think of a ship that's in danger of sinking. Anything not necessary is going to be thrown overboard if it's not necessary for, the, for, for that ship to stay afloat. It's going to go overboard. And God just kind of laid upon my heart just to talk to you a little bit. He wants us to examine our lives, look at our lives, and, and see what's in it that possibly could be thrown overboard that's not needed and that is not essential for what God plans to do. Hebrews specifically tells us, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is before us. So if we're going to enjoy this abundant life, a life to the full, life until it overflows, we're going to have to reassess and value the things that are in our life and make sure that as we go forward, say go forward, as we go forward from here forward, we have to go forward with the assurance that we're only carrying, we're only taking those things that are necessary those things that are essential, those things that are absolutely important, anything else now, I think when God brings us out of this season, he's going to want us to refocus, to reassess, and to make sure we only go forward with those things that are absolutely positively essential. Amen. So, so as we do that, as we reassess our lives, we have to make sure that we don't allow a little small something to cause us to, 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 to question or, or, or to cause us not to go through or to follow through with our assessment. And that little thing sometimes is known as pride. Say pride. Pride sometimes won't let you or I participate in identifying those things that are not necessarily important. And I just want to use this as an example. You know, right now there are a lot of people that are going through financial restraints and constraints and things like that. You know, uh, some people hours are cut back. Some people are on unemployment. Some people are unemployed. There's a whole lot going on in the economy. There's a whole lot going on in the nation family. But you have to be very careful because even from that perspective, uh, pride will step in and some people won't even request help. 
Some people that need help or assistance won't even request it because pride, say pride, their pride will not allow them to simply ask for help or to, to, to let someone know that they are in need. And then sometimes people, that pride will let people do things and, and keep things that they don't necessarily have to keep or need. Take for an example, pride to tell your child, you can't let people, people know that you can't afford that car. You can't let people know that. But I want you to know, understand something. You know, it, it's time that God is letting me know that we have to put pride to the side. You know, tell pride to shut up and be quiet and reassess every aspect of our lives, you know? So, so don't, be. You know, it, it's no time to be bashful. It's no time to be shameful. God wants pastor to tell somebody that you have to reassess what's in your life. And as you go forth from this point forward, you go forth only carrying those things that are absolutely essential. Amen. So you know that, that, that the thing says, you, know, you can't tell people that you can't afford this car. You can't let people know that you're going, you're struggling. But you know what? I, I've often heard this said, and Pastor, I shared this with my family before, is that, you know, if you want to get back on your feet, I heard that the quickest way to get back on your feet, what is it, Pastor? They said the quickest way to get back on your feet is to miss two car payments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The quickest way to get back on your feet. It's to miss two car payments. Don't let pride tell you what you can't do or tell you what you can't let people know or let pride make you go through something that you don't have to experience. We have to realize that if we're going to enjoy to the fullest this abundant life, what are you talking about, Father? I come that you may have life. Lord, but we're in a pandemic. It doesn't change the reason I came just because you're in a pandemic. I come that you should have and enjoy your life. And that's awesome. And how do we do that? God says, you're going to do that as we go through this season. Because this season is going to allow you to pause and reassess what's actually essential. And if it's not essential, God is telling me to tell somebody, it's going to have to go. It's going to have to go. It's going to have to go. Amen. Now, could it be that God is allowing? I didn't say that God calls this season or, or this pandemic, but could it be that God is allowing this season to cause us to stop and refocus? Uh-huh. Really focus upon what's important. I think that's crucial during this season, to really focus on what's important. Could it be that God is allowing us to go through this season to have what we call a Selah moment. Sometimes when you're reading the book of Psalms, as you go through the book of Psalms, every now and then you see this word, Selah, S-E-L-A-H, Selah. And what does it mean? It's, 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 it's been given the definition that Selah simply means pause and think about that. Say that with me. Say pause and think about that. So, so could it be that God is allowing this season for us this season for churches, this season, everything has been disrupted. Everything has been, has been turned upside down. Everything is different. This is going to be a whole new experience after this thing is over. So could it be that God is allowing this season for us to have a Selah moment? Pause and think about that. Pull over to the side of your life. Mm -hmm. Have a seat. Sit down for a moment. Take the time during this season to reevaluate and really know what's important in your life. And God is saying, if it's not essential, if it's not essential, God's saying, you're going to have to throw it. Somebody say overboard. My Lord, my Lord, speak to us, Lord. Talk to us, Lord. Yes, Lord, speak. Now, what are some things that, that, that are essential? I'm going to just try to stay calm and teach and talk this morning if I can. What are some things that are essential for us to make sure that we can identify and we can actually, actually live and experience this abundant life, even in the middle of a pandemic? How can we have John 10.10 10 manifest in our lives? One of the first things you need to realize, of course, is that it's essential that you guard your identity. Say, guard my identity. 
John 10, 10 says this, that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What did you say, John? Before he said, before Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, he specifically said that the thief comes. For what? To steal, kill, and destroy. And what is he really after? The first thing you have to really remember is that the thief is after your identity. He's, he's into identity theft. Yeah, uh-huh. You hear that all the time where people, people, people have their identity stolen and they got all these, all these programs and things to try to uh, prevent people from stealing your information, stealing your I uh, identity and everything because people can pose as you. But, but the enemy himself wants you to realize that spiritually speaking, it's essential that you never forget your identity. Never forget who you are. Even though we're going through these light afflictions and these circumstances, they do not negate who you are. Glory, hallelujah. Say it with me. Say, say my circumstances. Say my situation. Don't, they do not change who I am. You have to understand something. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You have to understand that during this time, in order to experience the abundant life, you must not allow the enemy to rob you or to steal, you, steal from you your identity. First Peter tells us who we are. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So who are we? We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. My Lord, someone help me say, I'm a king's kid. Say it again. Say, I'm a king's kid. That means God has purchased us just for himself. We are God's special people. You must never forget that. Even in the season that we're in, you must never forget who you are. Pastor, I don't have a job. That's all right. You're a king's kid. Pastor, uh, my, my, I'm on unemployment. That's okay. You are still a king's kid. Your status has not changed just because your circumstances may have changed. Don't allow the enemy to rob you of your identity. I'm reminded of the queen. She had a daughter that had came to the dinner table, and the daughter was slouching over and everything, and the queen looked at the daughter, and she said, sit up. And the little girl, she sat up for a little bit, and then she slouched down again a little bit. The queen mother would walk by and said, sit up. And she sat up, and then when the queen wasn't looking, she was slouching her chair again. And the queen said, my Lord, sit up, girl. Don't you know who you are? And that got her attention. She was the queen's daughter. My Lord, can you say amen? You and I, we are the king's kid. God, our heavenly father, is our father. Yes. So in the middle of a pandemic, how can you experience the abundant life? How can you really still enjoy your life to the full? You can, you can do so. If you don't allow the circumstances and the situation to cause you to forget who you are, don't allow the enemy to steal your identity. You are a king's kid. Say, I'm a king's kid. And you are headed somewhere. Amen. Number two. Now, if you're going to have a full life and live it to the abundance of what God is speaking of, even as a king's kid, you're going to need some provisions. Say provisions. Yeah, it's essential that you have provisions. You will need some provisions. Does not matter that we're in a pandemic. Does not matter what season we're in. You're going to still need some provisions. Amen. You need provisions before this pandemic. You're going to need provisions during this pandemic. You're going to need provisions after this pandemic. What does that mean, Pastor? What can provide Provisions. What can bring us resources? That little thing called money. Yeah, say money. You remember that song? Money, 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 money. Yeah, you remember it, don't you? Uh-huh. You're going to need some money. 
Yes, it's the money that provides a warm home. It's the money that keeps the heat running. It's, it's the money that puts gas in your car. It's the money that puts food on your table. Ain't nothing wrong with money. Money isn't evil. It's the love of it. You're going to need some provisions. You're going to need some money. God knows it. And I love something he says, family. If you're going to enjoy life to the full, don't let people fool you. And don't let people, let people uh, 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 tell you that, uh, you, you don't, all you need is love. No, no, no. I see these young sweetie pies and Valentine people, all of them lovey-dovey and so forth. But, you know, after the love wears off and after all the kisses have faded, they're gonna, somebody in this relationship is going to need some money. You're going to have to have some money. Someone says money is not important, but I say it's right up there next to oxygen. Amen. Somebody say you're going to need some money. And here's the thing in this pandemic. You better believe that as you want to try to live that abundant life, you want to live your life to the full. Look what God said in Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 31. Look at what our Heavenly Father said. And I want to just read uh, uh, three verses. Matthew 6, 31. He said, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? Hallelujah. Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Oh, but here's going to bring a refreshing uh, sense of, 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 of knowing that God's got you back. And look what he said. Talk to us, Jesus. For your heavenly Father knoweth. For your heavenly Father, what? Knoweth. For your heavenly Father, what? Knoweth. Your heavenly Father knoweth. God knows that you have need of all these things. Amen. So right here in this season that we're going through, some of you are experiencing financial difficulty. Some of you are uh, going through some financial struggles. So for, let me tell you something. Uh-uh, it ought not be. God can come through for you. I'm not saying that you've done something wrong, but I'm just simply saying you are a king's kid. Your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But look what it said in verse 33. Here's what we do. How do we do it, Lord? Here's what we do. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So a like of provision, say that, say a like of provision, and a child of God's life is simply nothing more than misplaced priorities. That's all it is. It's misplaced priorities. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, your clothes, your food, uh, staying warm in the winter, all these things, gas in your car, paying your insurance, paying your mortgage, all this stuff will be added. What do we need to do? Put God first. Amen. So a lack of provisions. Listen to me now. You can't have an abundant life just on love. Uh -uh. You need some money. You need some provisions. How do you get that? Well, here's what you do. You put God's way of being and God's way of doing things, you put that first. Yeah, awesome, awesome. It's simply saying, if you, now listen to me carefully now, take the notes. If you do not have provisions, if you don't have enough to be a blessing to someone else, someplace there's a misplaced priority. When you put God first, you will have provisions. Amen. I'll look at the Gospel of Luke real quickly. Luke 6, 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Provisions will simply be added. Now, they don't just fall from the sky. So I'm not going to let anyone confuse you of that. They don't just fall from the sky. How, how, how do we receive them? Look at Luke 6, 38. It says this. First of all, what do we do? Give. Mm -mm. And it shall be given unto you. How? Good measure. Press down. And shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with it, it shall be measured to you again. This is how it works. You put God first and his kingdom and you do things his way. Guess what God will allow? When you operate in the kingdom, how do you operate this? How do you get this thing going? You give. You give. Someone say give. You sow, family. That's why pastors want you to understand it's so important that you sow your seeds. Don't let the enemy talk you out of giving. 
Don't let the enemy talk you out of sowing. That's the way this thing works. It works that way in, 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 in nature. It works that way in the spiritual realm. You're going to sow. You're going to reap what you sow. So you give. Someone shout give. You got to give. And what does God do? God touches people's heart. It doesn't fall from the sky. He causes people to bless you. He makes sure that you come across with people who can bless you. He hooks you up with people who can bless you. He connects you to people who can bless you. But you got to give, and it shall be given. How, Lord? He said, oh, Lord, good measure. Come on. Press down. Uh-huh. Shaking together. My Lord, pack in as much as you can pack in. Do it, Lord. And we've seen these things happen. We've seen things happen. We, we can go back. I thank God that we've allowed, he's allowed us to see things. How people have, have been a blessing. When we was, you know, I passed the story about building the church. We didn't have a place to meet, but they built we, uh, the school we were going to, teaching at the time, built a brand new cafeteria. And we was able to move into that cafeteria and utilize a brand new, span, brand new spanking built cafeteria inside our school. And God opened that door for us. When we got inside, we had no chairs. We had absolutely no seats. There was just these round uh, lunchroom tables with little bar stools about, about, you know, a pie shape around where the little kids would sit their little, you know, sit on a little seat there. And that's all we had. We, there was no chairs. And the principal I said, oh, Pastor Reed, don't worry about it. She said, I think the school needs 100 new chairs. Oh, we didn't even, we didn't buy the chairs. The principal, God touched her heart, and she, she spent Orange County. I better be careful. But she spent money to buy chairs for the school that we could use. Can you say amen? And when it came, so I said, God, you're moving, you're working something. It was just added, family. It was just added. When we needed land for the church, the, uh, the, the land was not available, but, but it was released. It was released for us to try to purchase. You know, the school next door that we're with, they own the land, the city owns it, but they released it for us to purchase. And that was good news. So when it was time to purchase the property, the land where the church is currently built, we, we did not have to use the church money because God touched the hearts of a couple that gave the entire, process, the, the entire amount to purchase the property that the church is currently sitting on, where I'm currently standing. God is a good God. Some will say it'd be added. So uh, you know what? Now, I know you get probably maybe get a little fatigued and tired of hearing that testimony, but I don't. Because I see that when you give, God will give. He does it through people. He does it through th something. He release something that, that, that we know as favor. Someone shout favor. So you got to understand something. The enemy will come against you. He will first try to steal your identity. Secondly, during this season, he'll try to Think, let you think that you don't have the proper provisions, you will have the provisions. If you don't have what you need financially, if you don't have what you need for his food and clothing, understand something. It's simply a misplaced priority. Put God back where he should be. Put God first. Someone say first. He's not after Belt Lindsay. He's not after Sears. God must be first. You have to put him first. Duke energy cannot take the place of God. He has to be first. Can you shout glory? Can you say amen? Now, thirdly, it's essential that you know what's going to help you experience this abundant life is the peace of knowing that you are not responsible for the results in your life. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. Whatever results, whatever you're going to accomplish, you are not responsible for the results. You're responsible for one thing, and that is staying connected to God. Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, look at verse 4. John 15, verse 4. Here's what you have to wonder. What a peace that will come over you. You know what? That's why, you know, pastor, we go through life. We look at, you know, especially on pastors and preachers, sometimes there could be a lot of stress on a pastor. There can be a lot of stress on, on, on the man of God or the woman of God because they think sometimes that it's their job to produce results. No, it's not. No, it's not. Our job is to stay connected. 
And, and Jesus makes that perfectly clear. And you got to understand, if you're going to enjoy an abundant life, you must first of all understand that it's essential that you realize up front that you are not responsible for producing the results. You're responsible for staying connected. Say, stay connected. Jesus said, abide in me, St. John 15, 4, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. My Lord, talk to us, Lord, for I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Who? Hallelujah. Say, I'm not responsible for the results. The branches cannot bring forth the fruit. The branches must stay attached and nourished by the vine. And Jesus makes that perfectly clear. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So thanks be to God. You can enjoy that abundant life. Oh, what freedom. Oh, how many pastors, how many preachers, how many fathers, how many of those who, whatever responsibility that you're in, you're not responsible for the results. You're simply responsible to stay connected to God. It's essential that you remember you are not responsible for the results. You are responsible to simply stay connected to Christ. And somebody ought to help pass say, say, I'm connected. Woo, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Stay connected. Hook up with him in the morning. Stay connected. Talk to him throughout the day. Stay connected. Talk to him in the evening. Stay connected. You are not responsible for producing results. Take that pressure off of you. If you're going to enjoy the abundant life, Jesus requires of you to do one thing. What's that, Pastor? Stay connected. You must stay connected. Amen? It is essential next that you know that the enemy wants you to believe this. And I want you to catch this point. The enemy wants you to believe that there is only one outcome to your situation. Say one outcome. Yeah. He wants you to believe that what you're facing, come on now, if you're going to live the abundant life, you got to make sure you recognize this strategy that he will use against you. The devil wants you to think that whatever you're facing, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, he wants you to think and feel as though there is only one outcome to your situation. Someone help me shout, the devil is alive. Look at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 14, verse 6. I told you to keep your pencil ready. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6. There are more than one way, family, that God can deliver you. There's more than one way, family, that God can heal you. Look what's happening in 1 Samuel 14, 6. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over unto the garrison of of these uncircumcised. For it may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint, hallelujah, to the Lord to save by many or by few. So God has more than one way. He said, there's nothing to prevent, pre prevent God from saving us or delivering us by a whole lot of people or by a handful of people. Don't ever let the devil say, can you shout amen for me? Don't ever let the devil make you think that there's only one option. You only have one choice. You only have a, no, 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 no. Uh, there's more than one way that God can answer your prayer. Whoo, thank you, Lord Jesus. He can come. You're looking for him to come through the front door, and God can come through the back door. You're looking for God to come through the back door, and God can come through a window. There, there's more than one way that God can answer your prayer. What do you think about Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5? Proverbs 3 and 5 says this. And let me ask you a question. What part of Proverbs 3, 5 that you don't understand? Listen to what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not, glory to God, unto thine own understanding. 
Do what, Father? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, my son, my daughter. Trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hallelujah. Someone shout, don't limit God. There's more than one way that God can come through. There's more than one way that God can deliver you. There's more than one way that God can heal you. There's more than one way that God can put food on your table. There's more than one way that God can put, woo, hallelujah, clothes on your back. There's more than one way that God can put a roof over your head. Trust in the Lord. Glory to God. I'm talking to somebody. Trust in the Lord for all your heart. And don't lean to your understanding. If you're going to have the abundant life and enjoy the abundant living to the full, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil make you think that this is all there is. There's only one way that God can fix this. And that's where we mess up sometimes because we get in the way. Hallelujah. We think God should do it this way. And God says so explicitly in the Bible, he said, I told you earlier that my ways are not your ways. And I told you that my thoughts, hallelujah, are not your thoughts. Thank you, Lord. So trust him. Trust him. Lean not to your understanding. Someone shout amen. If you're going to have family also and enjoy the abundant life to the full, then you must always keep, it's essential that you keep an attitude of gratitude. Yes, say attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is that thing that unlocks the fullness of life. What's that, Pastor? I said, gratitude is that thing that unlocks the fullness of life. What does gratitude do, Pastor? It turns what we have into enough. <laughs> oh, can you say amen? Gratitude, say gratitude, unlocks the fullness of life. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah, I'm trying to give you some clues to have an abundant living. I'm trying to help you live an abundant life. It turns what you have into enough. I can go back. I can go back. This is Black History Month. I know now you tune in next Sunday because we're going to have a wonderful time on Zoom next Sunday. But I can go back. I live long enough to go back to realize that I was grateful for what God gave us. Yes. My children grew up in, with, with indoor plumbing. And, 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 and no problem with that. But I, I, I can get excited over indoor plumbing because when I was their age, when I was coming up as a child, when I look at my grandkids, our plumbing was outside. We had something they called the outhouse. It wasn't the in-house, it's the outhouse. And even though it's been years ago, I can still remember. <laughs> Amen. Gratitude. I was grateful, thankful. I didn't know he was poor, but I was grateful. My grandmother, whom I loved so much, and I, and I would dearly get a chance to see her back in glory. She fed me with that fat back bacon, my God, and those buttermilk beers, biscuits, and, and, and sir. Fat back bacon, buttermilk biscuits, and sir. Thank you, Grandma. And then when things got really good, we can get a pot of lemon beans, a pot of great northern beans. We get a pot of pinto beans. I didn't know anything was wrong. I was grateful. And guess what it did? It took what we had, be it fat back bacon and buttermilk biscuits and syrup, and made it enough. Say it's enough. If you're going to enjoy the abundant life, oh, thank you, Father. You have to remember something, family. Look at Psalms 34, verse 1. As I do ready to just bring this to a close, I just want to talk to you and try to stay calm. Look at what he says, Psalms 34, verse 1. He says, I will do what? Bless the Lord, how often? 
at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will praise him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Gratitude will help you live a full and abundant life. How, Pastor? Because when you're grateful, it turns what you have into more than enough. I reminded a man who was so happy, he lived a full life, he was happy, and he didn't even have any teeth. He just had two teeth, but he was still happy. He was still grateful. And the reason he was grateful, honey, you know that story, is because the two teeth he had, they hit. Thank you, God. Amen. When, the, when he closed his mouth, those two teeth came together. Someone shot, be grateful. These things will help you to live an abundant life, family. You know, many of you may say, Pastor, I'm trying to live an abundant life, but, but you know what? I'm down to, to little or nothing. Let me tell you something. If you ever get to the point where you find out that Jesus is all you have, that's going to be the time that you will discover that Jesus is all you need. I said, if you ever get to the point where you think that Jesus is all I have, that's when you're going to discover that Jesus is all you need. Amen and amen. Those points that I went over, those are essentials for living the abundant life. Oh, family, those things will help you to live that a full life. That's why I want you to take note and write them down. And let me share something with you too. And this is this is awesome. Uh, uh, I just want to share it, uh, this experience I had, which is so wonderful. Listen, a man should always pray and not faint. Bible teaches us to worry about nothing, pray about everything. To worry about nothing, to pray about everything. So prayer is such an important thing. Let me talk to you a little bit about prayer. Uh, remember when Peter stepped out of the boat, went to walk on water, and he was walking on water for a while, but he began to sink. He uttered a prayer to Jesus. It was simply three words. Lord, save me. That's all he said. Lord, save me. He uttered those three simple words. So let's look at Peter's prayer real quickly. It was, first of all, short, three words, Lord, save me. <laughs> Not only was it short, but it was sincere. It was sincere. He was beginning to sink, and he knew that from his heart, he wanted God to help him to answer that prayer. So it was short, three words. It was sincere. It was a, in a desperate time. And third, it was specific. What do you mean, Pastor? Yeah, save me. He didn't, he didn't have to rhyme. He didn't do anything. He was specific. He was to the point, Lord, save me. And the Bible said immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and picked them up and saved them. And just told Peter, just only reprimanded him for, for losing his faith, for doubting a little bit. But I want to share something with you, something that uh, occurred this weekend. Uh, with pastor. I had my son-in-law over this weekend and, and uh, I had my daughter, they were over at the church, you know, doing some things and so forth and working around the church and, and somehow they accidentally misplaced their key to the car, to the vehicle. So we were, you know, over at the church too, we asked them to, to look and everyone was looking for the key to the car and we couldn't find the key they backtracked everywhere we just backtracked and we was walking together so my daughter and I we were social distancing she kept her a little six feet away we was walking back toward the home on the back side of the church to try to see if we can find that key it could have been dropped in the leaves or something so as we was walking before we started walking I simply said a little prayer I said Holy Spirit you know where that key is. Help us find the key. That's all I said. And my daughter was there, my son-in-law, he was behind us looking around in a certain area. So as we was walking, can I tell it, baby? 
as we was walking. I want you to listen to Pastor now. I want you to listen to him. As we was walking, going headed back to the home, I heard someone say, here it is. <laughs> so my daughter, she heard it. So she stopped and I stopped because my son-in-law was on the other side of the church. I said, well, my son-in-law has found the key. So we turned around, we started walking back to see son-in-law. And, and so he was still looking. I said, son-in-law, you have the key? He said, no. Casey, she looked at me because we, we heard somebody say, here it is. So we turned around and we started walking again, we headed back to church, start looking. And before we can get too far, the son-in-law yelled this time for sure. He said, I found it. And we turned around and we came back and sure enough, it had fallen between the seats. But let me say what was so powerful. He found the key. We are trying to figure out who it was that said, here it is. Hmm? And you know, it's what was so powerful was this. Let me say what this to you. Is that having my daughter and son-in-law there with me, we had an opportunity, my God, to, to allow God to show himself and to show off. We just simply prayed a simple, short prayer. We simply said, Holy Spirit, you know where the key is. Help us find the key. We walked looking for the key. We heard a voice. My daughter was there. She's my witness. Say, here it is. And we come back to the corner. The son-in-law still looking for the key. There's only the three of us. Can you say amen? Isn't he an awesome God? Now, who? glory to God. Family. Now, God is good. Why did God do that this weekend? I'm glad that my daughter was with me. I'm glad that she heard the voice too. Because if not, I don't want people thinking, well, unless it must be the pandemic, must be getting the pastor. Because pastor's hearing things, something going on. No, 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 no. We heard it. But we just simply, pastor, what do you mean? Does God care about uh, finding a car key? Yes. We had a simple request. We simply said, I just simply said, Lord, I said, Holy Spirit, you know where the key is. Help us find the key. And what makes this so special is that somebody, somewhere, be it an angel or the Holy Spirit, what's my son law Yell, here it is. And just a few minutes later, my son law found, had found the key. God cares about you. He cares about every aspect of your life. Family, love God. Trust God. He's all you need. Don't be discouraged. As we go forward from here, your prayers are going to have to be sincere. They don't have to be long. Be specific when you talk to them. Talk specific. Tell them exactly what you need. Tell them exactly what you're asking for. And watch God move. Can you say amen? He's a good God. As we go forward, family, it's only the essentials that we take with us that's going to allow us to experience the abundant life that God talks about. So remember those things. Those points that I gave you, go back over and review them. God wanted me to take my time and teach that. So I pray that you have received a blessing from this message. To God be the glory for everything he has done and will do. Amen. Now, if you're with Pastor, you've heard of this message. Isn't it special? I still can't get over that experience my daughter and I had this weekend. Hallelujah. That God, and I'm so glad that she was there. I'm so glad that as a father and daughter, that she got a chance to see and to witness and to hear voice. We don't know who spoke the voice other than God set aside <laughs> and, and spoke directly to us. And it was so glad that she was there. So whatever God is doing, he can do it. Amen. And God wants to do things in your life. If you're not saved, he wants to move in your life. 
but you have to ask him to come in and to be your savior say pray this prayer with me if you're not saved heavenly father i come in the very precious name of jesus asking you to forgive me of my sins and i want you to know that i believe that you are the christ i believe that god has raised you from the dead and i want to make you my lord and savior lord i'm a sinner in need of a savior forgive me now cleanse me and father fill me with the precious holy spirit that pastor talks about so often and allow me father god to walk this new christian life and write my name in the lamb's book of life now if you prayed that prayer i believe that you're saved and you're part of our family i want you to know it's been good sharing with you god wants us to live and to have and to experience this abundant life irrespectful of the, the conditions it doesn't matter about the circumstances it doesn't matter about the pandemic if you do those things we talked about don't allow the enemy to, you know to take your identity you know don't allow him to rob you of your identity you are a king's kid remember that amen say i'm a king's kid yes you are and, and, and remember that there's more than one option it's more than one way that God can answer prayer. He can do it in any way. He can, he can save by many, or he can also save by few. There's so many things that God can do. Amen? So many things. So just keep those notes and go over them. And allow God to continue to minister you and bless you. We love you. We pray God's blessings upon you. Matter of fact, stretch your hands. Come here, sweetheart, with me. Come on, sweetheart. sweetheart. Help me say, God will. Oh, yes, he will. Lift your hands up, family. Lift your hands to our pastor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, Father, pastor said that you will. And I believe that you will. Oh, you can put whatever you need to put on the end of that. You will make a way. I believe that you will come through. I believe that you will give me a breakthrough. Hallelujah. I believe that you will give me a healing in my body. Say, I believe. I receive it. Lord, I receive a blessing. I receive finances. Whatever it is, God will do it. In the name of Jesus, just for you. Someone say, I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.